Hello friends, in this video we're going to be discussing the new document generation for Open API within .NET 9. This is mainly going to be useful if you're migrating from older version of .NET to .NET 9, where Swagger is not really the default template anymore for exploring our endpoints. Within .NET 9, a new library, new get package has been added, which allows us to actually add a lot of the functionality that we want inside our web APIs. So let's jump into the code and see how it's done. So what I have here is I have a very simple based on the default.NET 9 template web API, where basically I have a couple of uh, a single controller, my weather forecast controller, and inside of it, I have a single endpoint to get the random weather forecast. As well, I have my program.cs, where basically I have all of the different information built in into it. So I'm just going to run my application right now, and I'm going to open it up inside my web browser. So now if I put, for example, swagger forward slash index.html, we can see nothing happens. It's an empty page. And if I go back here to my rider, we'll be able to see that nothing exists. Now let me stop this. And let's see what comes by default when we have a new .NET 9 web APIs. So if I go to my CS Proj, I will be able to see that inside my .NET 9 CS Proj file, I have a single NuGet package which has been added, which is called Open API. And we can see it's running on version 9.0.0. And basically, this allows us to have the Open API spec implementation. This is a native, or basically, I should say, a Microsoft build NuGet package, which allows us to have that functionality. So if we come here inside my program.cs, we can see here that we have two endpoints, or basically two functionalities that refers to this. So first of all, we have the builder.services.add open API. And this means that we are able to actually inject open API inside our DI container in order for us to utilize it. The other one here is basically having the endpoint available for us inside our development environment. So now that we have seen this, now let's run our application again and see how we can actually access them. So now if I go back to my web browser and inside and instead of relying on Swagger, what I can do is I can put open API forward slash v1.json. And now, as you can see here, I'm able to have a open API spec for my web API where I'm able to see here my title, my version, the different version that I currently have, the endpoint that I can use in order for me to access this web API. As well, I can see here my single uh, get endpoint that currently exists and the expected response type and the different schema for the response. So we can see here different items, etc., etc. And we can see here the response type is going to be of application types JSON. And I can see below the components that it's using. So this is a very good out of the box implementation that has available for us. But let us take it a step further. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here is first of all, I'm going to show you how you can actually directly use it out of the box by simply adding another post or another endpoint. I'm going to call it HTTP post. And this is going to be very simple. I'm going to put public, I action result, and I'm going to call it post. And all it's going to return is a 200 and updated or anything like that doesn't really matter. So now if I run this again, and we should be able to see that this is automatically going to be picked up by Open API. So now if I go back to my web browser and refresh, now we can see here I have here my get and automatically now I got my post and I got the response code of 200 and this is exactly what I want. Perfect. So this is as simple as it gets to basically using it because by default everything is already wired up and I'm able to directly add endpoints and it, it will be automatically reflected. But now if I go back here, what I want to do is I want to actually leverage some of the new items that has been introduced within .NET 9. And one of these items, they're going to be called summary. So if I want to come here, I can put endpoint summary. And basically within an endpoint summary, it will allow me to provide a summary for my endpoint, which allows me to see it inside my open API spec. So I can see here my summary is to get the weather forecast uh, for the weather. And what I can do as well, I can put another endpoint description. And this will basically give a full description about my open API and how does it work. So now I can do this for my get. And what I can also do is I can do this also for my post. So I can put here endpoint summary and I can say, for example, this is a sample post and I can have an endpoint description. I can say this is a demo post or something like that endpoint. So now if I run this and I go back to my web browser and now let's monitor it here when I refresh. So now when I refresh, as you can see here for the get, I'm able to actually get the summary. I'm actually able to get the description. Similarly to the post, if I go a bit down, 
this is a sample post and this is a demo post endpoint so we can see with this i'm actually able to see all of the different implementations and i can see all of the different information that every single endpoint will provide me and if someone is actually consuming my web api they will be able to understand exactly what's the purpose behind this endpoint which is really good so now that i have able to do this within my endpoints now let's take it a step further and see how i can actually update my information here so if we go back to my program.cs what I want to do is I want to actually update my builder.services.addOpenAPI because what I want to do is I want to actually update the original OpenAPI spec main information. So the first thing that I want to do here is I'm going to add options and within these options, I'm going to add a transformer. So I'm going to put options.add document transformer and this will allow me to add different configuration that I want on my document and this is going to be my main OpenAPI spec. I'm going to first add a document, then I'm going to add a context and then I'm going to add a cancellation token. Then I'm going to actually inject these and then I'm going to use them here. So the first things first, I'm going to tap into the document and then I'm going to tap into info and I'm going to provide it with a title and I'm going to say my demo API. I can call it whatever I want. Then, of course, I need to return a complete task. I need to add here a semicolon, but that's not the only thing that I want to add. I want to add additional stuff. So what I can do as well, I can put document dot info contact equal new open api contact and here also i can add now my information so i can say my email is going to be for example muhammad at test.com i can put my name which is going to be muhammad and i can put for example if i have a url i can put a url here but i don't have anything right now i'm just going to remove it and now let's see what's going to happen i'm going to run this again it's running let me go to back to my web browser and now we can see i'm going to see this updated so i'm going to refresh refresh this and now we can see here that my title has been updated to whatever i provided my demo api we can see here the name which is myself as well as my dummy email address so this is how i was able to update my open api spec to take full advantage of this so one last item i would like to show although we don't have set it up yet right as of now if i want to add some authorization so we know with the swagger what i can do is i can add authorization and within this authorization i'm able to actually inject a better token and i can utilize it in order for me to have an authenticated user to access all of my apis so i can have something similar here i'm not gonna delve into the details right now i'm gonna have a separate video around this but just know for now that within the new NuGet package, I'm actually able to do this. This has been a very quick introduction about the document open API generator that has come up with .NET 9. I hope this video was helpful. If you'd like to support me, please make sure you support me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. If you like access to the source code, please make sure you are supporting on Patreon or become a member of this channel. If you have any questions or clarifications, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. Again, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.